Okay, I'm going to um, do a quick little run through. I um, didn't really have time in my talk to talk a little bit about how not just the device, but actually what you do with the device's data and how that all gets handled. Um, uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that and then sort of point you to the kind of detailed walkthrough and give you a few pointers on how to get the device set up. I don't think we'll have time to actually set up the device now, um, but I'll, I'll show you. There's a really detailed walkthrough, basically, that you just have to chug through. So, um, so with IoT, um, one of the things is how you get the data in. So this is an example, a very specific example, from the UK Met Office. So the UK Met Office is using the Azure IoT suite that you will be using with this device. Okay, so the same cloud backend as you'll be using for this. The Met Office is deployed for what they call the WOW Weather Observatory website, where you can register your weather station at home in your garden with the Met Office, and you can supply the Met Office with data, so they can then use that as extra input um, for their weather forecasting and climate forecasting. They have to do a lot of work around uncertainty estimation and calibration and that type of thing. They calibrate it against their own weather stations in the area, so there's a lot of smart stuff going on at the back end. Um, but actually, the point here is that what you're going to be doing with this is exactly what the Met Office is using on their um, solution as well. Um, and what that kind of looks like, this is an example from uh, Croke Park Stadium in Dublin. Okay. Um, and they've done an Azure project there with um, DCU, um, Dublin City University and Intel. Um, and what they've done is they, we've got what we call a gateway. So a gateway is where you can collect data from a sensor which is not necessarily a kind of modern IoT sensor, okay? So it could be a legacy sensor. And the gateway is a way of pulling in actually sort of leg legacy device data that goes into what we call the IoT hub, which is where you'll be deploying. Um, in here they can do streaming analytics and push it out through a web, a nice web dashboard. So kind of an example really of an end-to-end -end IoT solution. You know, as Dave was talking about, you know, we often think about the device but that's the easy bit. The hard bit is how you manage the device's data as it rolls through. Um, and so what they do at Croke Park is pretty cool, is they've got microphones, and what they can do with this IoT solution is during a game, they basically have how loud is the crowd, okay? And they <laughs> built that using, again, the same cloud backend that you'll be doing, um, doing today. So, and this shows a diagram of basically where they put microphone sensors around the stadium, and they've got wind sensors, um, and if you do a search for Azure Croke Park, your smart Croke Park, um, there's actually a long technical description of how they've, they've done this. It's a really nice um, kind of write-up. Um, and what you can do is you can push it out onto a dashboard, this is called Power BI, where it's pushing out the microphone data into a nice web dashboard. This is Power BI with no coding, so this is basically, if you can use Excel, you can use this, um, and you can use that as a, as a way of displaying the data coming off your sensors in real time. So. Um, so it's just a, a nice example where some folks at uh, DCU were using um, uh, using the Azure IoT. And the Azure IoT Hub uh, piece of technology is kind of interesting because it allows you to plug in lots of devices. Um, and it does, like I said, a lot of things we talked about security. So per device authentication using certificates, okay? You get that for free as part of this solution. Okay, so we've talked about talked about earlier about, you know, hey, wouldn't it be fun to deploy some sensors in a hospital? Yeah, deploying sensors in a hospital, you better be sure that you've got some security in there, right? So 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 this kind of handles a lot of that for you. Um, I was saying to other people, I think what's interesting really is when we think about research, the device itself is interesting. The insight and information we're trying to get from the device is interesting, like like we saw with the Oxford example with the water pumps. The bit in the middle, the plumbing, I would argue that's less interesting from a research perspective. And therefore, if you can pick up a solution like this, or there are other kind of IoT solutions, you can focus on, hey, what questions am I trying to ask? What information am I trying to In order to answer those questions, which sensors do I need and where do I need to put them? I might need to design new sensors, which is pretty fun. Um, but this bit in the middle, um, it's actually quite hard to do well, and things like security and scale and reliability are all really, really important. So, um, And so this is kind of another diagram of um, 
the sort of end to end and how we think about it is you have is what we call event producers and this could be software actually not just devices um, so it's quite interesting if you think about an experiment where you could be having devices coming off an experiment also gathering data from a simulation at the same time into some gateway and into our hub and then doing the processing either on the streaming data or batch wise on the stored data and then pushing it out um, into some sort of visualization so so that's really um, again the kind of end-to-end -end view of IoT okay so again we often just talk about the device saying that let's talk about a device so <laughs> So this link here, uh, URL Sean link, uh, it says Azure IoT Hazar, right? So it's, that's, it's called the Hazar device. Um, so that should send you to a GitHub page. Um, and the GitHub page has got some instructions. And so this device, how many of you have used an Arduino type device? Oh, excellent. Show me how you use it. Um, so this is a, an Arduino compatible device. Uh, it's got quite a nice bit of RAM. What's key with it is it's got a nice USB port in there so you can plug it into your laptop for power. You can um, buy a little lithium ion uh, battery. I think it's a 3.7 volt battery and you can plug that into there to, to run it away from, from uh, a cable. Um, but critically it's got a Wi-Fi. Okay, so this has got built-in Wi-Fi, um, which means that you can immediately, once you've got it all assembled, um, push the data up, up, up into the cloud. So um, so there's a bunch of stuff. Um, the critical bits, I think, are really the breadboard, okay, where you put that into it, um, and then I think there's a temperature sensor in here somewhere. So there's, I'm not quite sure what to do with the servo, but it's pretty cool. Um, uh, and so I think that's the temperature sensor. In there. Yeah, that's a, that's that white thing is the the temperature humidity sensor. So, so I think the basic example basically is a, is a temperature humidity. Uh, sensing example, but there are some other bits. The reason I got these boxes is it, it's got quite a nice little selection of bits and pieces, um, which hopefully will be nice. So the component bag has like LEDs and switches and things like that as well. So, um, so there's a nice little kind of collection of bits here, uh, even comes with the USB cable, um, that allows you to um, put it together. Um, what I'll do is I'll show you. So, um, so yeah, the, yeah, there are some pictures missing, which is a bit annoying. I don't know if that's just my Wi-Fi, um, but it's a pretty detailed. Oh, hang on. Just put it on the screen. Um, so this is the GitHub page. Um, so it's pretty detailed. Um, basically, I kind of walk you through it. What you need to do is you need to to set up the hardware, okay, so it tells you the bits, so it's the board, that bit, uh, the sensor, which is, I lost the sensor, the little white thing that I showed you, lost mine, oh, there it is, that one, um, the breadboard, ah. uh, and then you've got the jumper wires, nice colorful set of jumper wires, uh, and then there are some resistors. Yeah, there's a little pack of resistors in the component bag in there. There's some little resistors in there. I can remember how to read resistors. Um, I think I think it tells you in there. Um, uh, and the, the cables. So so that's the kind of device end. Okay. So there are some instructions on here. Nice picture to show you how to actually. Device in the breadboard for those of you who do not use the breadboard has got numbers on it, I think. Yeah, so you can kind of flip it around so it's the right way around, and you can put the pins in the right holes and hook them up. Um, it's pretty pretty easy, it's quite fun. If you've not, how many of you have not done hardware like this before? Yeah, it's good fun. Yeah, it doesn't work first time, but it's good fun. <laughs> so there are, it's quite a nice mix of people who've done it and not done it, so hopefully we'll, we'll get a bit of teamwork going when you, when you want to do the hack. Um, and it, it's got pretty detailed things of which cable to plug in where, which pins to it, so it's pretty detailed um, kind of walkthrough. Um, so that's the device end. Um, the other end is um, to deploy the actual kind of cloud backend. Um, there's two solutions. So there's, there's, you can create a new solution which will automatically deploy a bunch of services that you need. Um, there are two examples. One of them is... is um, called a remote monitoring 
example, okay, which is if you had sensors around a building. Um, and then the other one is a slightly smaller example. Um, I think, yeah, so the, the, this is the website. If I go, yeah, so this is called, it's called AzureIoTSuite.com. It's in there. And what you literally do is you, that actually has a big plus button on it. And you click plus. And what it does is it starts deploying a bunch of services, okay? Um, and what it, it doesn't say what. Um, so it deploys things like an Active Directory service, okay, because the Active Directory service handles all the authentication for the device. Um, and it installs sort of databases and messaging queues and all those types of things, so half a dozen things that it actually deploys, but you just click the button, give it a name, tell it where to deploy. You probably want to deploy in Europe, um, Northern Europe, Western Europe. I'm not sure if you can deploy into the UK, actually. There's UK bits as well. Um, so that's... Um, that's the sort of cloud bit. Um, it's literally, yeah, here, it's literally press that button uh, and it basically, yeah, you give it a name, uh, you select the subscription. So you'll need to have your Azure subscription that you got on the bit of paper, okay? Um, I'll put on Slack how you, actually, I think it says on the bit of paper how to activate that. Just ping me on Slack or come find me and I can help you activate that. So that solution gives you some agile time to deploy this, uh, and you can see the list of stuff. It deploys a web server, a website, for instance, for the dashboard. Um, and what happens is when you do the deployment, after a few minutes, uh, you end up with this. So this is actually the, the dashboard that you get. Um, that deploys. So it deploys a website. It's deployed a bunch of simulated devices here. Okay. Um, uh, and a little map so I can, um, and it's deployed a bunch of simulated devices here. So, uh, and then what it's got is the device humidity, uh, and, uh, hang on a second. The projector's a bit funny here. Now. I believe in that left hand side one. There we go. Um, so over here, hopefully. So it's deployed a few uh, simulated devices. Um, it's got some rules. So it's got alarm set for thresholds for temperature and humidity. You can set those thresholds. Um, you can set alerts. Um, you can set actions. Yes, yeah, so you can set actions if an alarm goes. You can select an action. Um, importantly, down here. There's a plus button. So when you get your uh, device configured, what you do is you actually press plus here. And then what you do is you add a new custom device, which is your physical hardware device. Um, and what happens is you generate an ID. Uh, it's got it in the instructions. And then you, you put that ID on the device itself. OK. Um, uh, when you flash the device so that the device has got the right ID um, and actually instructions show you how you also have to you'll have to copy and paste a um, uh, yeah so that you, you create a key basically in here and what you need to do is you'll copy that device key back down onto the Arduino onto the into Arduino ID and flash that onto the device so this key is the security between the device and the cloud, so it knows that it's got a, a proper connection. So that's in the uh, in the instructions. So um, I think that's about all I want to show. Um, there we go. Um, yeah. So so that's basically the um, again. It's in the instructions. And GitHub basically to kind of work through that. If you cannot, I think if those pictures don't appear in the GitHub, which is a bit annoying, then um, you can actually download it as a zip file and then you can get the, the markdown. I guess there's a markdown version. When I was looking at some of these pictures were missing. Um, so what you need as well, you'll see in the instructions, is the um, Arduino RDE, uh, IDE, which is something like this. Um, 
And so this is the code, the C code that you put in that you then push down onto the device. And you'll need to copy and paste keys and things, which, which if you go through the instructions, um, it'll tell you exactly how to do that. So, so I have done it on these devices. Um, the key thing is to follow the instructions. Okay. Normally, an error occurs when somebody thinks, oh, this is easy, and they skip a step. <laughs> okay, so, so do go through it very carefully. Um, I, when I did this, had a few issues on another device with the kind of Arduino IDE and some of the drivers and things like that. So um, we have set up a Slack channel, um, if you've not already seen it, um, which is IoT Technical. Um, so use the IoT technical channel because particularly many of you have used these things before as well. Uh, if you can uh, chime in and help help people as well. So we've got a technical Slack channel if you want to try that out. So I think doing this takes about, I think it took me about half an hour or so, um, 40 minutes, you know, making a few errors. Um, so it it you have to kind of sit and concentrate and do it, but it, it, it's, it doesn't take like hours and hours. It, it should be fairly quick. So um, so a, a lot of it, actually, it's quite a bit of fiddling about just getting the Arduino ID set up. And things. That's actually a little bit fiddly, so if that's taking a little while, don't worry. Um, this bit's really easy, actually. The cloud bit's, once you get the device configured, this bit's really easy. Um, uh, so that's it, really. So yeah, have a look um, through the instructions. Um, and hopefully we can do some epic hacking with the, the IoT. It'd be really interesting to see how many devices we might be able to connect, <laughs> right? uh, just for fun. Um, uh, the um, the device itself scales quite uh, quite nicely. I've got a slightly. I have got a video. It's it's, it's got music and stuff. Um, So somebody here is talking about Rolls Royce yesterday. Um, so this is Rolls Royce. As an airline pilot, I know that to fly with the best, you need to work with the best. It's a bit cheesy. With over 13,000 engines in operation around the globe, Rolls Royce provides the services to maintain them and peak performance. Today, each engine has thousands of sensors that can produce terabytes of data on long haul flights. Making sense of all that data is critical in transporting my passengers safely and efficiently. Rolls-Royce uses Azure IoT Suite to analyze data remotely and deliver real-time, actionable insights to me and to the airline about engine performance and operational efficiencies. Advanced analytics help us optimize fuel economy, anticipate maintenance needs, and avoid costly downtime and delays. A single unscheduled disruption and its knock-on effect to a fleet and the passengers can cost an airline up to a million dollars a day. With early notice, our team can proactively have parts at the right place and time, reducing inventory costs and maximizing availability. Up to one-third of a plane's weight is fuel. As a pilot, I decide how much fuel my plane carries. Insights into engine efficiency, weather conditions, flight path and scheduled landings impact my decision. Cortana Intelligence helps me choose the optimal fuel level to maximize efficiency. With 40% of our operating budget devoted to fuel, even a small percentage reduction can save us tens of millions of dollars each year. Microsoft and Rolls-Royce, reaching new heights in customer value. So that's an example. Again, it's Azure IT Suite. It's the same thing that you will be deploying, um, which is kind of one of the fun things with the cloud. Um, if you can do that, so. There we go. Um, there we go.